There are a lot of examples of wrestlers joining WWE and hitting it out of the park on their first run there. People like Steve Austin, Randy Savage, or John Cena. But not everyone can be this lucky. No, some have to fail the first time around so they can leave and come back again, all the stronger for it. Yes, today we're going to be looking at those people who missed the mark during their initial spell in WWE, but nailed it on the return trip. And where better to start with this subject than with the current man of the hour, Cody Rhodes. That's right, while Cody may be sitting on top of the mountain as WWE's top babyface and current world champion today, things were not always so rosy for him. No, back during his first run there between 2006 and 2016, he failed to really make it to that upper echelon. This despite the fact he was the son of the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. But then, how could he be expected to hit a home run once he started wrestling under the Stardust gimmick? So, what happened to change his fortunes? Well, after deciding not to renew his contract in the mid-2010s, the American Nightmare went out on a pilgrimage across the world wrestling scene, a pilgrimage which saw him perform in places like New Japan and TNA, all before eventually helping to form All Elite Wrestling in 2019. And you all know what happened here. Cody proved that he really did have it in him to be a main eventer. So it was then that when his time there came to an end in 2022 and he made the decision to go back to WWE, he already felt like a guy primed to be slotted into the top spot. And it appears Vince McMahon noticed this too because immediately after his re-debut, Rhodes would be pushed like the superstar he'd never been pushed like before, with his two-year-long journey towards finishing the story and winning the WWE title from Roman Reigns being one of the hottest angles in wrestling history. And it's not like he's slowed down since winning the belt either, because as it stands today, he's still the champ over on SmackDown, with this looking like it's going to be a position he fills until at least WrestleMania 41, when he no doubt defends against The Rock. But Cody Rhodes isn't the only top guy in WWE right now who had to go through a failed run first initially, as over on Raw, the exact same thing could be said about our next subject, Drew McIntyre. Yes, Drew McIntyre is killing it on Monday nights as his current heel character and has easily been one of the best things in wrestling the past year. And that's a great thing if you're a fan of the Scotsman, as it's often been a rocky road towards the top for him. Sure, he may have gotten the approval of Vince McMahon himself during his first run with WWE back between 2007 and 2014, but that turned out to be more of an albatross around his neck than anything else, as the moniker of the Chosen One put incredibly heavy expectations on his shoulders, expectations he was not yet ready to carry. Luckily though, after leaving WWE behind and heading over to places like TNA instead for a few years, the Scottish psychopath was able to find that missing piece of the puzzle. So when he returned to his original home in 2017, he was more than ready to kill it in every aspect. And kill it he most certainly did because after a brief run in NXT where he became that brand's world champion, Drew moved up to the main roster and from there went on to win the WWE title at WrestleMania 36. Of course, this wouldn't be his real peak though. No, his real peak wouldn't come until he turned heel a few years later and went on to have his epic feud with CM Punk. And what a great job he's done in this rivalry over the last few months. So good a job has he done in fact, you could easily make the case that he has a case for being 2024's Wrestler of the Year. But let's move away from the present of WWE for a moment and back to the past instead, as it's there we find our next subject, a true evergreen legend who had to undergo a second WWF run before he really broke out. Who are we talking about here? Who else but one of the all-time greats, Owen Hart. Yes, while the King of Hearts was undeniably one of the most entertaining things about 90s WWF, what's gone semi-forgotten today is that he actually had a run before his more famous one, one which happened between 1988 and 1989. Of course, you'd be forgiven for forgetting about this one though, as he wasn't going by his real name back then. Rather, he was under a mask and going by the gimmick of the Blue Blazer instead. Perhaps unsurprisingly then, with this gimmick not really allowing Owen much of an opportunity to show his natural charisma, it didn't lead to him getting over, and instead led to him being cut from his contract pretty quickly. But thankfully this wouldn't be the last time we'd see him in a WWF ring, as a couple of years later in 1991, he'd return, and this time, things would go a lot better. That's right, this was the run everyone remembers, the runt of the Heart Litter 4, as it's the one which saw him turn heel on his brother Brett in 1994 and have that legendary feud with him. The one which encompassed both their 5-star classic at WrestleMania 10 and their arguably even better steel cage match at SummerSlam later on in the year. 
And it's also the run which saw Owen become a multiple-time tag team champion and intercontinental champion as the new generation era gave way to the Attitude Era and he transformed into the Blackheart. Sadly though, it's also the run which saw him tragically pass away before his time during a repelling stunt gone wrong at May 23rd, 1999's Over the Edge pay-per-view. But what about our next subject? Someone who recently competed in a tournament in 2023 dedicated to the late great Owen Hart, and another man who had to have a second bite at the apple in WWF before he really took off. A man who goes by the name of Dustin Rhodes. Yes, when Dustin signed with WWF in 1995 and from there took on the gimmick of Gold Dust, he was over almost immediately. In fact, so big of a deal was this character back then, there are some who credit it as being an early origin point for what was later to come with the Attitude Era. But this wasn't his first run in the WWF. No, that came a few years prior, between 1990 and 1991. What was the Dallas native doing back then? Well, he was teaming up with his father Dusty to help him fend off the attacks of both the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase and Virgil. Sadly though, once that feud was over, it would be goodbye to WWF for a while for the rookie, as at this point, he returned to WCW with his dad. Of course, as we all know now though, he would get a chance to make a return come the new generation era, as this was when he made his re-debut under the moniker of Gold Dust, an androgynous character who challenged many an audience perception of the time. And that was such a hit, it led to him being a regular fixture in Vince McMahon's promotion for decades thereafter, with him working there on and off all the way up until 2019. Needless to say then, this second run being as successful as it was meant any disappointment Dustin had over his first aborted spell in the WWF has likely been washed away over the years, as no one really remembers this part of his career anymore. Instead, they primarily remember the good times when he was working for WWE the times he was doing things like teaming with Booker T or winning Tag Team Gold with his brother Cody. Hell, they might even remember the time he had a brief interaction with our next subject in an infamous backstage skit, someone who seemed like a surefire can't miss for WWE when he joined their roster in 2003, but who didn't work out the first time around, Goldberg. What a disappointment this one was. After all, in the late 90s and early 2000s, there were few wrestlers on the planet who felt like as much of a force of nature as Bill Goldberg. But with Vince McMahon seemingly feeling the need to put his own stamp on things, he tried to mess with what had been a winning formula when he brought the Tulsa native in at the beginning of the Ruthless Aggression era, with this only serving to nerf the former WCW world champion. And that's exactly why once Bill left WWE a year later, it felt like fans were never going to see him again. That was until 2016, of course, the point that Bret Hart's favorite wrestler made an unexpected return to WWE to squash Brock Lesnar in less than 90 seconds at that year's Survivor Series. That's right, as it turned out, all you had to do to get Goldberg over was let him be who he'd been in the first place, a near indestructible badass who mowed through opponents before he had a chance to even break a sweat. And keeping to this formula then, WWE was able to get another several years out of the whole act with this run lasting so long and being so successful, it would see the babyface legend win the Universal title on two separate occasions and be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2018. Yes, it's true that by this point a significant contingent of fans had turned on Goldberg after they felt he was being pushed way too hard at the expense of younger talent like Bray Wyatt or Kevin Owens. But even if you take this latter backlash into consideration, it's still undeniable that Bill's second run in WWE was far more successful than his first, as it saw him actually come across like the star he'd been back during his WCW days. And Goldberg isn't the only guy known for having a great run during late 90s WCW who had a limp first go-round with WWE, only for this to be followed by a far more successful second one. Though the same thing applies when talking about our next subject, Hulk Hogan. Of course, Hulk Hogan's glory days in WWF came long before the turn of the millennium though. After all, it was back in the 80s that he became a superstar during the first boom period of WWF, with him using his star power to carry the company to levels of mainstream success it had never seen before. But like with Owen Hart's first run in the WWF, it's often gone forgotten that this was not Terry Bollea's first go-round with that promotion either. No, he actually had a spell there between 1979 and 1981, back when it was named WWWF and was still being run by Vince McMahon Sr. So what happened to cause Hogan's first run to end so abruptly? 
Well, after taking the role of Thunderlips in Rocky III, the big man found himself on the outs with his boss, as McMahon Sr. didn't think a wrestler exposing the business in a major Hollywood movie was a good idea. But once Vince McMahon Jr. took over a few years later, he had no qualms about bringing the future face of wrestling back into the fold. And boy was he right about this. We don't have to tell you how impactful Hulk Hogan's run in the 80s was for the wrestling business as a whole. Hell, were it not for him ruling the roost as WWF champion back then and getting millions of fans around the world to tune in on a weekly basis, the industry might not exist today, at least not in the way we know it. So to say his second run was more successful would be the understatement of the century. Yes, this might be the biggest example ever of someone coming back after a hiatus and hitting a total home run on their first swing. Seriously, everyone else we've already looked at today and will be looking at as we continue on can thank the Hulkster for his iconic feuds against the likes of Andre the Giant, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Rowdy Roddy Piper laying the groundwork for the future the company would have. And this includes our next subject, someone who didn't have too much luck during their first run with the WWE between 2010 and 2014, but who had much better luck the second time around between 2016 and 2024. That's right, it's time to talk about Jinder Mahal. Okay, here's one for you. How do you show all your detractors up after your first run with WWE between 2010 and 2014 ended with you playing the role of a jobber? Well, you make a grand return in 2016, and from there proceed to win the WWE title. That's right, this was the route Jinder Mahal took, and it worked out so well for him it's earned him a spot on today's video. Sure, you could argue he's not the most beloved WWE World Champion in history, but he is a former champion nonetheless, and that's something which no one will ever be able to take away from him. And if you think about just how low down on the pecking order he was during his initial spell with the WWE during the early 2010s, that's quite an impressive feat to say the least. Yes, this was a guy who was considered the Genetti of 3MB by many, so to go from that to the top of the mountain is impressive. And it's not just becoming the man for a brief period which makes Jinder's second run so much more successful than his first, as aside from that, he also had much more notable feuds against the likes of Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Hell, the modern-day Maharaja even beat the King of Strong Style on two separate pay-per-views during this period. All of this is to say that the gap in what Mahal was able to achieve between his first and second spells in WWE is great. But let's move away from the men for a moment, as it's time to look at an example of a woman's success story during her second run in WWE, that being Chelsea Green. Now, if we want to get technical, then Chelsea Green has actually had three go-arounds in WWE, as she first appeared on Raw back in August of 2014 as the physical therapist alleged to be having an affair with Daniel Bryan. For the purposes of today's video, we're going to count her real first run as happening between 2018 and 2021, as this was the period she took elements of her hot mess character from TNA over to NXT, and there began rising up the ranks. How would this work out for her? Well, it would see her eventually get onto SmackDown, though there wasn't much success to be found for the British Columbia native once she made it to that point. No, the real success wouldn't come until she was released in 2021, spent a couple of years working for Impact again, and then returned to WWE in 2023. And the reason success came her way at this point was because that when she developed her all-new Karen character, a woman who wanted nothing more than to speak to the manager at all times, with that manager usually being general manager Adam Pearce. But then we can't argue with her methodology here because all of the complaints have certainly led to good things for Green, as since returning to WWE, she's become a one-time women's tag team champion. Will she be able to rise any higher than this and maybe snag some singles gold before all is said and done? It's entirely possible, especially with the cult following she's been beginning to develop as of late on account of how entertaining she is. Who knows, one day soon we might even be talking about Chelsea Green as a WWE Women's Champion maybe even as the person who took that belt from Nia Jax. But even if she doesn't do this, the fact that she's risen as high as she has on the blue brand already makes her second run far more successful than her first. And she's not the only person who used SmackDown as a canvas to make that second run all the more special either, because if we flash back in time to the Ruthless Aggression era for a moment, we'll find the exact same story happening with our next subject, Eddie Guerrero. That's right, Eddie Guerrero, one of the greatest wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots and a true legend of the industry. So great was he, so beloved does he remain today, that even now, whenever someone like Andrade busts out of Three Amigos, fans still chant his name. 
That said, while he was always beloved by fans, WWE didn't always hold Latino heat in such high regard. And if you need any evidence of this being true, you only have to look at how his first go around there went between 2000 and 2001. To be fair though, a lot of the reason this run ended badly was because it was right at the height of Eddie's addiction issues. And so even if he was still delivering in the ring for the most part, his insatiability meant the company had no choice to let him go after a certain point. Thankfully, however, after spending a year on the indies getting himself cleaned up and being something of a king in exile, he'd make his return to the WWE in 2002 and there proved to be better than ever. That's right, this was the run where everyone's favorite scoundrel truly rose to the top of the mountain when he beat Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at No Way Out 2004. And it's also the run where he gave us the incredibly memorable feud with Rey Mysterio. Sadly though, it's also the run which ended prematurely when Eddie tragically passed away in November of 2005. But while he might have been gone too soon, at least fans got to see Latino Heat do his thing for as long as he did. And at least he got to have that second run in WWE where he was able to fully solidify himself as one of the top guys in the industry. It's not something everyone gets. It's certainly not something we ever thought we were going to get for our next subject that was until we did in 2018. Who are we talking about this time? Who else but Bobby Lashley? Yes, there was a lengthy period there where it looked like the Almighty's history in WWE was going to end with him leaving in 2008, never having fully achieved the potential he had within him. After all, by all accounts, his initial exit was not an amicable one, and during his subsequent time in TNA, it didn't always seem like he had any interest in working for WWE again. In the end though, his stance would soften and so it was in 2018 he'd make his comeback to the WWE. And thank god he did because despite a rocky start, he'd eventually evolve into his final form there, a dominator who was tough enough to become WWE Champion on two separate occasions, lead a stable of his own, and beat both Goldberg and Brock Lesnar clean. Yes, this second run was a true success and finally saw the Almighty get his deserved run on top with him truly establishing himself as a future Hall of Famer. But then it's not like Lashley hasn't always been capable of greatness, it's just that it took him a while to put it all together and for Vince McMahon to fully realize how to best position him on the show. And he most certainly succeeded in this over the last few years. That said, with the Kansas City native recently leaving WWE behind and his current future remaining up in the air, it's unclear if we'll see him achieve any more in his original home at any point in the future. Will he return to Bellator to take part in some more MMA fights instead? Will he continue wrestling for a company like AEW or TNA? Or will he eventually find himself back in WWE once more, this time for a third run? We guess we'll just have to wait and see how things play out. But no matter what happens, one thing we can be sure of is that even if his first spell in WWE didn't end the way everyone involved had originally hoped it would, his second one went so well, it's pretty much erased all that from memory today. But then everyone we've looked at today could say something similar, because while their initial go-arounds may not have been a home run, they each proved that sometimes all you need is a second bite at the apple in order to prove yourself. And if you get this at the right time, you can really show any detractors you might have that you have it in you to succeed in WWE.